So the first step in the fuel pump upgrade for the E28 is running a 10 gauge wire all the way from the battery and it's going to have a fuse, 20 amp fuse and a relay mounted right here. And then this is going to go all the way back down into the firewall and I'll show you where I have it coming out. Right here on the firewall. So it's just right next to the clutch pedal. There's a spot with a grommet that I've already ran another wire. Sorry for the bad camera, but I'm just gonna go around down the side right here and then just follow the standard wire path for the car. There's just along the, the uh, channel here, along the door seal, there's a path where other harnesses go and then they go under the seat. So you can see just along this channel and through the back, there's another channel right here. You can just pass it through and it'll go back under the rear seat and uh, over to that side of the car where the fuel tank is. So you have to uh, pull out your front seat, back seat, and it'll give you enough access to it. So that's, uh, that's the hardest part of the wiring portion, in my opinion, is just fishing a wire all the way back there. So this is the power wire and it's just hidden behind the kick panel, door seal, whatever you want to call it. And it comes up, it actually has a crimp and transitions down there. You can see to black, all I had was black wire. So I just had to do a U-turn and then it comes along the back side of the seat and goes over to the other side over here. That's all we do. And then this is a really good clean grounding point. So I had some extra really thick wire laying around. So I cleaned this with a wire wheel and put a brand new crimp on the end of this and ran it over. And that will be the grounding point for the fuel pump. Caught up in some major rewiring here just to try to tidy some things up, making some new battery cables and uh, putting some new terminals on. But this right here is what a fuel pump relay can very well look like. So previously we had this absolute piece of junk with like 18 gauge wire at most going to the battery. And now we have 10 gauge. This is a positive terminal post that's gonna connect down to the positive on the battery there and 10 gauge to a 20 amp fuse then going into a sealed hella relay that was uh, 30 slash 50 amps and then there's a 10 gauge wire right here I haven't hooked up the trigger yet that goes to the ECU but it runs all along here and goes back down into the firewall into the car where I showed you it ran in the other videos. So that's it. Really, all you need is a direct connection from the battery to a 20 amp fuse and then a relay. So there's a lot more options of ways you can do this. You can use smaller relays. You can put the relay and the fuse kind of anywhere that you please, but I just figured for where I already had wiring coming in from the ECU, this was the best spot for me, so, yep. Excuse the rest of the wiring, but we're trying to make it significantly better. Another portion of this that I wanna mention just for any old BMW, because any old car in, in general, honestly, is it would be really beneficial to clean or replace the battery posts and the terminals and the uh, battery cables that go back to the alternator and the starter. Uh, let me just give you an example of what we're replacing here. Like this, this piece of junk that is corroded and really bad. 
So that to this. And you don't have to buy motorsport stuff like I have. I just enjoy doing it, so I'm making it that way. But you can go to the hardware or sorry, the auto parts store and just buy the pre built lengths. Uh, they have them all in stock most of the time. You can just throw one in there, and as long as it's good and fresh and it's the right size, uh, it should work just fine. So, there we go. All right, welcome to the fuel pump upgrade hanger portion of this video. And we're going to start in the trunk of the E28 here. Um, and after you take off the trunk uh, carpeting, there's a plate underneath that just has three screws and a little foam gasket that sits on top of where the fuel pump hanger is that goes into the tank. So that guy comes off and then you can see, let me zoom in here, uh, you can see down in there there's the hanger. So um, there's a few different uh, screws. I think it's six, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight millimeter screws that hold the hanger in and then you just need to take off the feed hose which is just a usually just a screwdriver and flat blade same with the return and then this is the fuel level indicator that actually comes out with an, a few other uh, eight millimeter screws and that just pulls straight out which i'll show you and then there's the two connectors there's the connector for that and the connector for the pump and those are going to come off so basically we need to take everything off and then pull that thing out. So that's the first step and let's get started. One quick thing to mention is sometimes it's nice to take some compressed air and a brush or a vacuum and blow out the area around this. It gets a lot of dirt around it and if you don't want dirt going into the tank, it uh, helps quite a bit to clean this out first. So just. clean out like that I previously went through and brushed that to loosen up any of the hard dirt in there so should be good at this point first thing I'm gonna do uh, sometimes it helps to have some needle nose is to just gently remove these plugs sometimes they'll come loose by hand sometimes you need a little bit of a little bit of persuasion on the rubber boot you don't want to hurt this because you're gonna reuse it for the fuel sensor the fuel level sensor. Um, this guy right here is just a little bit stubborn. There we go. So just that little plug and it comes out like this. So you just leave it to the side. And then this one we are removing but we still want to be nice to it just until we get it all sorted out. So there's your two plugs and we're going to use this same path where the wire goes under the trunk to bring the new wires through so just leave that off to the side and the next thing we're going to do is remove and loosen these clamps and there's only a little bit of spill there next thing we're going to do is take out this fuel level sensor that makes it easier to remove once this is gone. You can just pull straight up on it gently and it is full of fuel so as you go up just shake it and it will help drain out some of the liquid. let it drain and there you go there's your uh, fuel pump hat removed 
just like that. All ready to modify. Welcome in. We're going to go over a few fuel pump upgrade considerations when you have an old 5 Series BMW, namely E28s. Also, this applies to like E23s, E24s. Uh, they all have the same gas tank and fuel pump setup. So traditionally, on one of these cars, you have an in-tank pump that feeds through a half-inch line to an external under-the-car fuel pump. There's one just under the right passenger seat, the rear seat, and it has a fuel pump and a filter kind of all in one hanger there. And so what's common to do on these is to remove the external pump altogether and just put a single in-tank fuel pump like this AEM 340 or a Walboro 450. But we're gonna go over some of the considerations and some of the issues uh, that I've had over the years with doing this setup and wanted to show you kind of how to make it work. Let's jump into it. So the first consideration is, unfortunately, because of how old these are, I, I don't think they had it figured out yet. The inner diameter of where the tank of where the tank opening is, is like 48 to 50 millimeters. So it's very small where you can actually fit uh, the fuel pump hanger and the fuel filter into or the fuel sock, rather, into the tank. What we're going to do is using a, an AEM 340. So this is like your typical E85 quality fuel pump that's good for about 500 horsepower on ethanol. And they are like 39 millimeters in diameter, which is perfect because... The factory fuel pump is roughly that same size. So you can basically make it fit no problem. Other considerations that you need to take into account are modifying this. So you're going to have to take off the old pump. It's just this screw and this slides off. I can show you here in a minute. And there's a hose here that doesn't even have clamps on it that is meant for like low pressure. This is just feeding the other external big fuel pump. So what you typically have to do is either go from this, which is I think roughly a half an inch, um, to five sixteenths. So one way you can do that because the yeah the inlet on this is five sixteenths, which is like nine millimeters. So you can do that with a barbed fitting like this. This is half to five sixteenths. So you would need to cut this, put a piece of barbed of, of hose on, and then barb down to the pump, just like that, kind of in line like that, and connect them. What I prefer to do is not use a brass coupling like this and a bunch of connections, but I understand if you don't have the access to this, but I will TIG weld on a barb that fits the right hose that I want. So I usually just go to like a hydraulic store and find a JIC fitting. So this is female JIC, which is just flare, 37 degree flare by 3 8 barb. So this on like a Walboro 450 is the same barb size as the Walboro 450. So you can just put a piece of 3 8 hose between it and go about your merry way linking these up. The, other, the only thing you have to do is I cut the threaded nut off of this and then cut this tube off, put these together, and then gently TIG weld them on. So basically you're modifying the pump hanger so that it has the correct size barb to begin with just so you can run it like that. The other thing you can do too is it's very difficult to find in my experience, but you can get a 5 16 barbed fitting and just cut the barb off and then weld that as well. The only problem with this is unless you have a lathe and you can make your own fittings, be careful what fittings you buy because sometimes the ID of the hole in the fitting is not ideal. Uh, it's much smaller than it should be for 5 16 
So let me give you an idea real quick of how these look. So this is 5 16 and this is 5 16 but they're made by different companies, just found them off eBay, different brands, but like, look at the difference in flow. Like this is absolutely gonna hurt your, your flow compared to this. So like, for example, let's just measure this real quick. So it's like 6.8 millimeters ID, and this guy is like 4.47. So you have to be careful of what fitting you get and measure it out. What I like to do is just take the pump that I'm going to use and measure the outlet ID 5.75, so almost six millimeters, and just try to match the same ID as this pump outlet. That way you're not restricting yourself right away with a fitting that you weld it on right before the pump. You at least have the same diameter from the pump outlet to the, to the hanger inlet and then the rest of the car, you'll have to figure out. The stock lines are 5 16 and a lot of people have run those to over 500 horsepower, no problem. Um, so 5 16 fuel line is fine, even on E85 for that power level. But just consider that not all barbed fittings are created equal. And going as large as you can, or taking a fitting that has a little bit of extra material on it and then just boring it out with a drill. I have done this before on my last build that I did one of these. I just took a fitting similar to this, got a larger drill bit, bored it out just enough to where it had a lot of, still had a, a good amount of material on it and I could weld to it, but it made the diameter of the hole a lot larger so you're not choking it down. Because once again, I mean, there's a big difference between different fittings and don't just take all fittings for equal um like for example this is a 3 8 or dash 6 fitting so technically larger than uh technically larger than the 5 16 but it's only slightly larger than this 5 16 fitting so if you get the right 5 16 fitting you can get close to 3 8 inch uh diameter like uh surface area through the hole or sorry uh, area through the center so anyway i could ramble on about that forever but it matters when you're trying to make power you don't want to choke it down and and uh, leave yourself hanging there so those are just some considerations with this and let's go over this one thing too this electrical connector is not anywhere near capable of handling the 10 to 20 amps that these draw. Some of these Walboro 450s draw like 30 amps. So you absolutely cannot use this. And what I typically do is I use this hole, I drill it out, just break this off with, with pliers, feed the two 12 gauge wires through that come on the pump, feed those through, and then I fill this with epoxy with the like fuel safe epoxy. So you basically just make a, you make your own pass through where the wires come out and then I terminate a connector on it. So keep that in mind too. Do not try to reuse this. I have tried doing that and it actually doesn't work. I've, I've tried reusing this connector on this exact same fuel pump and it started limiting, limiting at like 300 horsepower. We were having issues there. So run a 10 gauge wire from the front of the car to the battery, from the battery to the fuse, to the relay, all the way to the back of the car to this fuel pump, 10 gauge. That will secure you in having the best amperage and power, power availability possible for your fuel pump. You probably could go 12 or even 14, but if you just don't wanna worry about it, just run 10 gauge, just go all the way to the back. Most of the pumps anyway are like 12 or 14, and by the time it gets to the back of the car, your voltage drop, you want as little as possible. So the larger the wire for the longer distance, the better. So I hope that helped uh, you a little bit and uh, enjoy upgrading your fuel pump. Welcome back. We are going to modify the fuel pump housing on this E28 fuel pump hat. 
and I'm going to show you how I go about this. The very first thing that you need to do when you take out a stock fuel pump, if it's been working well, is measure it. So you need to know how how deep it is. You can always go back with a, a measuring stick or something and dip it in the tank and see what the bottom depth is, but you can always just use what you have if it's not been modified. So it's a little bit under nine inches or uh, 225 uh, millimeters. So yeah, 225 mil and uh, yeah. So now we know how deep it is. The other consideration we need to take is like this pump is offset. So where the pump actually, or where the hat meets, it actually pushes back and the pump sits further back in the tank. So this is towards the front of the car and this is the back. And in the in the tank, there's actually a kind of a cup area where this sits. It's a kind of a quasi surge tank thing. It's just to keep the slosh from getting away from the pump. And so we're trying to land it in the same spot. So we want our fuel pump and its filter to line up the same way, basically. And we're gonna try our best to do that. This situation is gonna be a little bit unique because I have decided to try to fit the Walboro 450. This will barely, barely fit, um, but we're gonna try because I want all of the fuel pump that I can get. So we'll see what we can do and uh, go from there. So the AEM uh, four, or sorry, 340 is probably gonna go in another setup in the E30. So we'll keep that. The other thing is, if this fuel pump sock is really hard to get in and we have to bend it quite a bit, we can use the AEM fuel pump sock. Uh, they have the same mounting area. So you can just click this on and you have a different sock. But we're gonna try to use everything that came with the Walro 450 first. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, okay, I'm gonna put this back for a second. The very first thing we're gonna do is take a screwdriver and remove the fuel pump mount. Uh, that's this little guy right here. It's just a clip that threads in with a screw and it also holds the grounding strap. So that's the actual ground for the pump. The pump grounds through this entire apparatus. So yeah, there we go. Put that to the side and it holds in place down here, but that's not a big deal. That just kind of keeps it straight in its place. What's crazy is this doesn't have any clamps. Like look at how loose that is. It just pushes fuel up and I'm sure it spits it out when it overpressures and pulls in air when it's really low, but I'm gonna cut that and then just gonna wiggle this guy off. Let's see. I think we actually may need to take this clip and just pull it off. That's what it is. And then wiggle this guy out. Just like that. So, there you go. There's a fuel pump that seems like it's from the 80s. Maybe 90s or something. I don't know. Freaking old. Okay. We'll keep that uh, in case I need a liquid transfer pump at some point. It's actually still working pretty well. So... Another reason to change your fuel pump sock or filter. Look at all that. Just like grit that's stuck in there from the, the tank. Okay. Pull this guy off. Like literally just smooth bore, no clamps. Anyway. Don't reuse this. I have tried and put clamps on it and it just blows out in the center. Don't do that. Don't. Okay. Okay. So basically at this point, this guy fits in like this. Fuel pump is sitting forward like this. So we want our new pump to kind of do the same. So the difficulty with this is we're trying to maintain that same distance. And if we just plop this down right here, it's gonna be way over, way, way over length by like, yeah, 40 millimeters or something like that. So uh, what we need to do is both cut this tube down and this tube. 
This tube is actually fairly important because it spits the excess fuel back into the little surge cup that's in the bottom of the tank. And so we wanna maintain this as much as possible. So we'll only cut as much as we need further back. So we're just gonna try to figure out where that will be to match up our 220 millimeter length at the bottom. And you have to remember too, we put this sock on and the sock has a piece of plastic that sits down. And it actually has a little plate right here that bottoms out. It actually holds a gap in there so it doesn't ever suck flat. So we're actually gonna probably, we need to measure 220 from the bottom of that. So it's actually gonna have to be pretty far up. We're gonna basically just cut the tube at the bottom of this and see if we can get it to work right there. So yeah, we'll go that way. So I'll go out and we're gonna use my little Milwaukee die grinder and chop that and chop that. And this guy, we're gonna wanna chop it right as it turns a bend. So keep it kind of as straight as possible, just right there. So let's do it. All right, we went out, cut this up. Uh, you can see here, it's just steel that's like zinc plated. We're gonna grind the zinc off before we weld it because breathing that in is not great. Um, but yeah, there we go. I have actually a deburring tool, don't you worry. Um, so we'll deburr this a little bit. And when we're done, we'll just blow all this out with air and make sure it's like totally clean. It got a little bit um, off with the cut there, but that's fine. We're actually not going to use this anymore, this wire, so we'll just cut it really close so you can see. And let's see the moment of truth. This little guy, we're going to have to weld him on right there. So I actually might cut this back and get it down to where it's thinner, um, where it can, yeah, where it can weld on right there. But basically that's what we're doing. We're gonna weld on our own threaded bung, just like that. And then once that guy's welded on, um, we'll be able to, let me back this guy out a couple, we'll be able to mount the pump like this and just connect the hose. So. Pretty neat. Yeah, we might end up needing to cut this off right here. Okay, let's measure it. Let's just get it get it close here. Um still like 10 millimeters too long. So yeah, I think at this point, what we're gonna have to do is, I'll probably still keep this tab, but I'm gonna bend this out or cut it off real quick. And then I'm gonna cut this back kind of on an angle a little bit too. So that might be what we need to do. This is kind of just trial and error for fabrication. Like we're not, there's no set way to do this. Um, so yeah, just be patient and we'll get it done. All right, we've got this all made up. I had to cut it flat and just back to this lock ring where the, the uh, flare nut would usually be. But that I think is gonna give me a pretty good place to weld right here. 
I'm actually probably just gonna try, they're just steel. I'm just gonna try fusion welding it using this lip as the material for welding. So I'll just go in with low amperage, probably like 40, 50 amps and just ease it down over the top of that, get a tack going and then if I need filler, I'll use it, otherwise I won't. So without further ado, let's do it. And get the camera set up so you can see this will be kind of uh, just a trial and error kind of deal. Uh, we're just going to tack it first. So let's set this up and then we'll get going. Just attack. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry I didn't have more welding footage for you. This was actually really difficult to get to as far as just physically get in here, hold the TIG torch, hang over the top of it. You couldn't really see. So anyway, that is a push lock uh, barb JIC fitting that I modified, cut up, and welded to this pump housing. So now that we have the pump housing figured out, Here's the old guy. We just need to rig up the new one and see if it'll it'll hold. I already sprayed this out to clear it out of any debris. Uh, thankfully, it goes directly into a um, filter right after this. So for the first little bit, we can run it and it'll still be filtered. So I did spray this out and try to get it as clean as I could. I also chamfered this took my tool here, chamfered this out, chamfered this out. They were all kind of curled in and not really smooth. Don't know how much that matters, but my OCD, it matters to me. So let's throw it together. I'm gonna set back just a bit and get this thing done. So this is my beloved Continental Push Lock Hose 3 8 um, it's definitely my favorite of all the push locks I've tried. It works with fuel. Um, it's non-conductive, 3 8 good to 300 PSI. Uh, it has lasted about five years with E85 in it, and I have even used it in tank. So it's not necessarily for in tank fueling, but, uh, when I use it for that purpose, it works. So, um, yeah, so this guy, it's going to be kind of a pain to get it on. We're gonna use some WD-40 and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So let me grab some wire. I think I'm just gonna wire strap this for temporary and uh, then we'll, we'll figure out how long this guy needs to be. Okie doke. Um, next thing we're gonna do is take this out. You can just tear this thing out. It's like just plastic. There's a little ground strap on one side, but it's just got like an O-ring right here that seals it on the outside. And then a ground strap that usually just breaks right off because it's so weak. This one's actually like hanging on there. There we go. So that is where the wires are going to come through. So we're going to take both of these wires from the pump, feed them through like this with a little grommet and then I'm going to epoxy that hole. So we got to go clean this up, get this ready, and then we're going to put a Deutsch connector on the end of that. Sound good? Cool. Next, let's get in the pump set up. I think actually, even if we set it up like this, we could put the wires over this and just set it up so that these, the pump outlet is facing the housing inlet or outlet as well right there so these guys kind of hang out put a piece between them something like that and uh, it'll probably be just fine okay so i've got it zip tied kind of tentatively where we want it still needs to you know, kind of more like that get these two to line up 
Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I just put a little piece of hose here to kind of give it some support. I think when we're done, I'll support it off of this too. Just make sure it's all good and dandy. I'll just cut this because we can cut it off whenever and we'll go drop it into the tank. Okay, I have one more thing. We need to consider the, the position of this. This is the uh, tank sender. So we actually need to put this guy in and just make sure we're not interfering with anything. So I'll put him all the way down and then put this over here. And I think it'll actually fit just like pretty much perfect. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be basically a perfect fit. So. Cool. Well. The tank sender actually doesn't even go as far down to the bottom as I thought it would, but it's all good. Okay, we're we're good. Just make sure you consider this, not that it should matter too much cuz it's basically a similar diameter here, but because of that swell where the turbine is, just want to make sure it works. Went ahead and cut a small piece here. And another thing that I do on this, this push lock stuff can be very difficult to apply. So I bevel the edge. I just take a razor knife and just bevel that. And then definitely use some, uh, definitely use some like WD-40, some sort of lubricant just to help get it on. It's a pain sometimes depending on the size of the stuff so I love this stuff it doesn't smell like garbage like WD and uh, we can spray a little on there and get this thing set up so we're actually gonna probably want to put it on here first because this is such a pain this uh, actual push lock stuff this one looks like it goes on pretty much no problems, no drawings, but yeah, Let me just make sure real quick, we're going to be good on the length. I just tried to cover both the barbs. So, yep, there we go. We'll try it on this first. Okay, we're trying to keep this hole that we need to epoxy grease free. So we'll just go around like this. Spray a little bit in here and just like a touch around the edge, just enough to kind of help it along its way. And then beautiful, doesn't get much better than that. And these push lock fittings, they do not need, um, yeah, they don't need any clamps. They are socketless. It's a type of hose that's designed specifically for this. So you don't have to worry about that. As long as you get it over the both of the barbs, it's gonna be on there for good. And you, yeah, you can't pull it apart. You have to cut it off. So let's just make sure this is all good. Yeah, looks good to me. Good enough for who it's for. This guy is interesting because it's going to be... kind of wanted to go over this. Welcome in. Let's wire up my fuel pump on the new fuel hat that I modified to fit a Walboro 450. So... They have these giant connectors on them and because there's not a lot of physically, there's not a physical amount of room in here because where this pump goes in, it basically is like a cylinder of space in here and trying to like fit this and tie it up in here and get it through, it's gonna be a pain. So we're gonna opt out of this and just run some Tevzel 10 gauge right through the top of the pump, the pump hat, in and uh, use some uh, splices, some of these splices here. And uh, yeah, just go into that there. So first thing I'm gonna do is just chop this 
these are must be 14 or 16 gauge 16 huh yeah not very much considering the amperage but we're doing 10 gauge right to them and they have some pretty high quality Sweet. Okay. So I had to do a little bit of uh, finagling and re-drilling this out just a little bit to get these to fit. We're going to fill that in with epoxy on both sides, but that's just how it's going to sit. And then trying to get both these wires inside to work and get these to lay over and, and connect and everything has just been a little bit of a mess. I just didn't want to bore everybody to death. But um, let's go ahead and try this. I think we're about ready to send it. So we can crimp this guy. So we're actually gonna wanna go to the, th the third one in, because it is a 10 gauge. Very nice, very tight and strong. I don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon. Then this guy, I'm just gonna do the same thing on. we're done so this guy will sit in there this will sit in there just kind of looped up like that Raycam DR25 okay cool so getting close these guys coming out now we just need to epoxy these bend them over in their right orientation and uh, yeah, we're almost ready to go. There you go. I don't know if it's the right way, but it's my way. And I mean, it is gonna be solid. 25 amp connector, 10 gauge wire, Tevzel, all the way down to the pump, hard connected, so. Yep, that's it. That's it, that's all folks. All right, it has cured overnight, the epoxy that we set in. And uh, let me just go over this real quick. We'll go over everything that we did to this and you can do the same. So first of all, the fuel pump is a Walboro 450 made in the United States. Last digits is a 267. Sometimes they go by a Walboro 267, uh, TI Automotive, 450 liters per hour. Um, I do have the screen for this, the filter. We'll throw that on before we put it in. We had to cut the bottom off of the return tube in order to have this enlarged pump section fit in the tank. Uh, typically, most pumps are just this thickness, like the two Walboro 255s and AEM 340s. They're about this big all the way to the bottom but on the Walboro 450, it's larger. And this really is only an issue on these older BMWs or things that have a small fuel pump hat. A lot of new stuff uh, has fuel pump hats that are a lot bigger in diameter and you can fit all sorts of different pumps in there. Anyway, we cut off the connector. There was a Delphi connector in here and it was just too large. So we took the fuel pump wires, put service loops in them and went directly to 10, gauge, American wire gauge, Tevzel um, wire, crimped them and wrapped them in Raychem DR25 just to keep them from contacting each other, insulating. 
it's not really about keeping gasoline out. They can be drowning gasoline and it doesn't matter. Um, this is Continental uh, Instagrip 300, so it's a push lock socketless tube. I've had really good luck with this over the years and tested it in tanks and it's been fine. So it was like a two and a half inch piece between the two barbs. This is a socketless fitting that was welded on. Um, I welded that, I don't know if you can see it really well, but you can see the weld there. There's a socketless fitting. Usually this tube comes all the way down and has like a half inch adapter that goes onto the stock fuel pump. But this is a 3 8 inch socketless steel fitting that I cut down and welded on. Just got that at a local hydraulic store. I put clamps on both ends uh, just in case. This socketless technically doesn't need it, but to keep the pump from twisting under torque, I just put one here. This, it does need a clamp. It's not socketless. It does have aggressive barbs, but I put it on anyway. And, oh, under here, I, I put some tape until the epoxy cured, but I taped in here to keep the epoxy in one place. Um, and then, well, yeah, we drilled out the stock, the stock plug here is way too inadequate. Like the, the, con the conductor sizes are way too inadequate for a pump that pulls like 20 to 30 amps. So drilled those out, fed the two 10 gauge wires through and filled it with epoxy. So that is a two part epoxy, filled it. It is very hard and it's not going anywhere. It's very stiff and sealed. So that'll seal out any of the fumes and the gas splash that comes up. Um, just put some heat shrink tubing on this to protect it. But yeah, there's the Tevzel, the positive, the negative. And then this is a Deutsch connector, a DTP. So the Deutsch power connector, this is good for 25 amps. So, and this was in kind of rough shape, rusted. So I just ground it off a little bit. It looks like garbage, I know, but I mean, that's what you get when you have a 35 year old car that's, uh, got parts that have been outside so anyway I de-chamfered or I chamfered this I de it and same with this probably doesn't matter much but it matters to me so blew these out with air before I put it back together to make sure there weren't any metal shavings and we are ready to go back in the car okay so here we have the underside of the car sorry it's not as elegant when it's not on a lift but over here in the corner, you can see there is the grommet that goes from under the seat um, and the, the power for the fuel pump in the stock location comes out. So that's where we're gonna feed the wire right over here. We're just gonna push it through that grommet and then the wire feeds over along this edge and then goes up through this hole and that goes into the top of the fuel tank. So here's the fuel tank. It just goes up on the top and that's where the sending unit and the other power for the sock in tank pump goes. So we're just gonna run the 10 gauge wire through that up and over and just feed it through and then we'll connect it up. The next portion of this is changing out where the stock fuel pump goes. So we just remove the two connections over here, the power, and then you're gonna connect this hose to this hose with a coupling. So you just need to, uh, looks like that one actually is developing a crack. Should probably replace that. See that right there? But anyway, inspect them and replace them. I did the fuel filter recently, but it would always be a good idea, especially if you're going high performance, just keep your fuel filter fresh, especially on E85. But um, yeah, you just use a brass fitting that I'll show you that it goes from 5 16ths over to half inch. Um, and it just you just connect those two hoses together and remove the pump. It's basically that. And then this wiring you can chop out or get rid of. If you're not gonna provide power to it anymore, you can just chop it. Um, like in my case, I took out the stock relay, so I'm not really worried about it at that point. So, let's get to it. I'll just uh, get it done real quick, because it's under the car, it's kind of a pain to film, and then I'll show you when it's done. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Got the pump here and the sock. Show you real quick. The without the sock 
it does go in, it's just ever so slightly, it just tips in, just barely. And like the metal zip tie here, just the metal zip tie here just barely catches, just, just a touch. So um, it'll be okay, but that's just one thing to be aware of. So I'm gonna put this down towards the bottom. I'm gonna put the filter sock on, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna put the filter sock on and uh, drop it in. And yeah, I've gotta get everything lined up so I can cut these wires down here and terminate the plug. So let me just get this all set up. Now I'm gonna have to like squeeze this to get it in. So just, yeah, know that that's part of the deal. And so the basket's gotta go in, or the filter's gotta go in first, then the pump. Okay, so I got it in, tightened these guys up, this, now I've got this wire to contend with. It's gonna be kind of tricky to get this plug on, but there should be enough room right, right here. Now I just need to figure out where I should cut power in the ground so that they can, they can probably coil up back here just a little bit and then go into the plug, so. Milwaukee on the lowest setting actually does pretty good for this kind of stuff. All right, so moment of truth. Just by the skin of our teeth. Holy cow. <laughs> Just barely fits in there. How do you like that, huh? How's that for TV magic? Look at that, just barely. It all sits in there nice. So, that's how it's done. Okay, here's the final product. Um, you can see there's the coupler right there, just a half inch to 5 16 coupler. And then the rest of the hose is out of the way. The old pump is removed. The wiring comes out of that bulkhead and comes over and in. Just use some sheathing to go over it. So there's that. And yeah, that looks, that's pretty much what it is. Also, if you plan to only make 300 horsepower, this was the stock fuel pump that was on my car. And, uh, there's the part number. This made 385 wheel horsepower, so over 400 crank horsepower. And this is why you upgrade your wiring because it has like 16 gauge from the feed. And then the little pump that goes to the trunk is just tied to this. And it only has like 20 gauge. So there you go. The amp clamp here on the new Walboro 450, 15 amps just sitting there idling. So it's not uncommon for these to go up to 20 amps or more under heavy load. So let's see what the whole system's up to.